just been enjoying it. Tremendous, tremendous produce. It's incredible to see all the different varieties. As you can see right here, there's about 30 different kinds of tomatoes they're stacking and taking to markets and uh, all over the Northeast. But we're just really enjoying the different varieties. Like here's the peach tomato. It's just a really smooth, uh, delicious tomato. It almost has a peach-like taste. Very smooth, uh, silky smooth skin. It's different than a lot of tomatoes. But a very mild flavor for somebody that likes it. It's a mild tomato. They also have the green zebra which is a nice tart tomato, the pink tomatoes, black tomatoes, just all the different colors in one farm. It's really exciting to see the commercial interest taking off for the heirloom varieties. And we're really excited to be here today with the weavers. Hi, I'm Harold. These tomatoes here I'm packing for New York City. You just go with it, but some of the stuff has not been really uh, making all that now, well. How about the purple tomatoes? Do you like any of those cakes, like turkey purple? Yeah, I'm finishing these up now. Okay, this is how the finished product back. looks like. He's here. He's back Perfect. as far as he can come. Okay, I'll get it. Now you can delete that. <laughs> I love the green zebra. You know, that's... Uh, there you've got the yellow coming out when it's ripe and it's also soft to touch, but that's mine. I love that one, yeah. With Tim Stark, he'll be picking it up later today. Okay, right. And he'll, he'll sell it to distributors. Menard. Uh-huh. I usually Menard. Menard. See, I, I get it wrong. You anymore. These tomatoes are incredible. Look at the colors. Boy, oh boy. These heirlooms are just absolutely fantastic. So it looks like these are packed up and ready to go. So we have boxes here with the... Uh, eight two-quart containers destined for some grocery store, I guess, downtown. My mixed flat of what I call beefsteak heirlooms, the larger slicing heirlooms, and this is how we pack it to, to go to the restaurant trade, okay? Here we've got some of the green stripe ones. This is one called speckled Roman that I think is a very tasty tomato, and this is vintage wine, and that's a good one also. Heirloom tomatoes just left here, uh, left the Weaver Farm, we believe is destined for uh, Trader Joe's. So it's great to see the heirlooms getting out here in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is one of our favorite tomatoes here, the Paulina tomato. It's a very good sauce tomato, also works well for sun drying. And we have really uh, turned our customers on with these. We sell these by the boxes full to people that want to make a very tasty uh, red sauce tomato is my most popular sauce tomato now, okay? And it was given to me by a friend of a friend, and I tried it and liked it, I told my friend, tell your friend that it's a wonderful tomato and that I think he should name it, because he hadn't named it yet. And I also knew that his friend was a composer and he wrote folk music. And he was from uh, Hungary, and he was very much into uh, uh, hunting wild mushrooms. So he wrote a song about hunting wild mushrooms. He had a friend whose wife died of cancer and she liked sunflowers. So he wrote a sunflower song. And at that point in time, he had already written a song about our hot pepper jelly. So I said, look, name this tomato and write a song about it. So now he's named the tomato after his mother, who was his gardening inspiration. And he has a, a, a song named a tomato named Paulina. And that's my most popular sauce tomato. But it's got the story right behind it. Came from Italy to Czechoslovakia to the Lehigh Valley to Meadowview Farm. In an heirloom a seed or an heirloom vegetable, what's neat about it is that they have those stories behind them of people growing them, passing them down generation after generation. And now people are rediscovering them. Restaurants mention that this is made with the Cherokee purple tomato or whatever tomato it may be. And it's, I think it, it fascinates people that they're actually eating tomato with roots that are 100 years old or more, or more than that. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Yeah, th th this is the Paulina tomato, but one year we found growing in the Paulina patch, it like two Paulinas grown together, okay? And we kept looking and we found more of them 
that started looking that way. Sort of flat, half the width of a regular tomato, but a sauce tomato. So we started selecting for this. Interestingly enough, at the same time, one of my customers brought me a tomato and said, hey James, look at this tomato. This is neat, couldn't we start saving for this? Both he and I started saving seeds for this tomato. And it took us quite a few years, but eventually we were able to stabilize this tomato. Now, he was an Italian guy and his name was Leonard. He said, do you mind if we call this Leonardo's? Mm -hmm. And I said, I would not have a problem with that. So that is where the Leo Leonardo's tomato was born, okay? From a Paulina, you know, going to something like this, but eventually, the end product. Also, a very good sauce tomato. And I have people asking, could we have the Leonardo?